Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I will be doing a tutorial on how to run the Reflection Refraction Lab for today's assignment. I've been getting a lot of questions from students about how to run simulations and having trouble with interpreting the simulations or just running them in the first place. And so I figured it'd be helpful to make a video tutorial on this. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open the simulation itself. And when you open it up, it'll look something like this window right here. I just have it split screen so you can see two of the windows at the same time. And we're gonna click on it. It'll open up and it tells us to select the more tools option, which is all the way on the right hand side. So double click on that and it should open up and look something like this. So the first thing we're going to be exploring is reflection. It says light reflects when it reaches the boundary of another medium. And it tells us to go to the bottom left corner and click the angles box. So you go to here, bottom left corner, angles box. And you click on that so that the angles of incidence, reflection and refraction are all shown. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my laser, which is this red button here. And it says we can move the laser pointer from zero to 90 degrees. Now we can change the angles of incidence, which is what I'm doing by moving this laser back and forth from zero to 90 degrees. If you notice in this diagram here, it shows that the is incident ray is what's coming from my laser pointer. This is the incident ray. And the angle of incidence is the angle between that incident ray and 90 degrees from that boundary. Okay, so what do I notice about the angle of reflection compared to the angle of incidence? So if we look at this figure one diagram here, notice the angle of incidence again is from the incident ray to the normal or the 90 degrees to the boundary. And the angle of reflection is basically the angle between that normal, that 90 degrees to the reflected ray. And so let's go ahead and take a look at our simulation here. If I notice in this example, I have my incident ray hitting the boundary. And then here is my normal. The angle of incidence therefore is 41.1 and the angle of reflection is 41.1. So how would you describe that? Let's see if I move it, if that changes. Okay, so my angle of incidence here is 54.9 and on the other end it is 54.9. So hopefully through this you can kind of get an idea of how to play around with the simulation. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question here. Using the intensity tool, and so I've actually circled it over here in the handout. It is the green thing right here. Uh, measure the intensity of the reflected light as the angle of incidence increases from zero to 90 degrees. So the reflected light is this light right here, and that's what we wanna measure. All right, so at 54.9 degrees, it is 13.83 percent intensity if I move to 67.9 degrees which means I'm increasing the degrees it is now 26.61 degrees if I make it a smaller angle of incidence and angle of reflection 29.7 these are just random numbers it is now 5.72 percent intensity so you want to answer this question what happens to the intensity of reflected light as the angle of incidence increases so okay here's my 29.7 if I increase it to 47.8, again, really random, it is 10.22%. If I increase it to 70, it is now 30.51%. And I'm sure you can guess what the pattern is. Go ahead and answer that second question. After we've explored reflection, we're going to go ahead and move on to refraction. So I'm gonna show you this little diagram here to explain what refraction is. It says that light changes speed when it enters another medium. Okay, so in our example here, we have air on top. That's where incident ray, or in this case of our simulation, the laser pointer is being beamed out. And then it is entering another medium. In this case, it is water. And our refracted ray is the um, how the laser basically bends as it enters that second medium. Okay, so again, this change in speed causes light to change direction. This phenomenon of bending light is called refraction. Okay, so number one, it says the index of refraction, also known as little n, is a number that helps determine how much the light will refract between two mediums. Change the index of refraction of both mediums to determine the conditions that lead to the following situations. In other words, how do the indexes of refractions compare to each other in order to give you that result? Describe the two mediums necessary as in the example below. Okay, so that's a lot of words. Basically, you're given these different situations. For example, angle of incidence is greater than angle of refraction, and you need to determine how do the indices of refraction have to compare to each other to give us that result, okay? 
Okay, let's just use this example. So how can we get an angle of incidence that is greater than an angle of refraction based on different indexes of refractions? All right, so let's just play around. I'm gonna move my intensity um, tool back into the toolbox because I don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna go ahead and just see, my goal is to have the angle of incidence. Let's go back up. Again, angle of incidence is where the laser beam's coming from. Okay, the angle between that laser beam and normal, I want that to be greater than the angle between normal and the refracted ray. So I want this to be bigger than that. All right, if I notice in my example right here, I have air as my top material, okay, and I have glass as my bottom material. That's where the, the light beam is passing through. Even in this example, I see that my angle of incidence 49.4% is greater than my angle of refraction, 30.4%. So let's go ahead and take a look at the materials and their indexes of refractions. I noticed that the index of refraction of air is one, and the index of refraction of glass is 1.5. So based off of that, I think, okay, it looks like when the index of refraction of the incident ray is lower than the index of refraction of the refracted ray, then we get an angle of incidence that is greater than an angle of refraction. Let's go ahead and change this bottom material. Let's say that it is now water. Okay, water still has an index of refraction that is greater than air's index of refraction. And I notice the same pattern where the angle of incidence is greater, 49.4, than the angle of refraction below, 34.7. Okay, and I can actually play around with this. You notice the greater the index of refraction is on the bottom, okay, compared to the index of refraction on top, the smaller that angle of refraction gets. If I was to lower that index of refraction, okay, then we get a different story and now um, we no longer have an angle of incidence that is greater than angle of refraction. So hopefully that helps you better understand how to interpret and tackle the next few questions here. The next situation I want to figure out is how would you get an angle of incidence as equal to the angle of refraction? So you can go ahead and you just play around with these sliders. And you want to figure out when do you get an angle of incidence that is lower than the angle of refraction? How do the indexes of refractions compare in that situation? And then how can you get an angle of refraction that is equal to zero? In this situation, light is completely reflected and not transmitted, so therefore light is no longer passing through here. And see if I can get you an example of what that looks like. Okay, that is what... This is an example of when you see an angle of refraction equal to zero. How does that happen? I want you to compare the indexes of refractions and find different situations where that happens. This is known as total internal reflection. And then in D and E, you're actually going to be comparing velocities in different mediums. And so again, you'll be playing around with the different mediums and you'll be using this speed tool right here to measure the speed of the ray in each medium. So you'll just measure over here, okay? How does this speed change or not change depending on the different indexes? Next question is, does changing the angle of incidence affect the velocity of light in the second medium? If so, how? And so you'll just be changing this angle of incidence here and then measuring the speed based on those different angle of incidences. And then the last thing you'll be doing is setting the simulation so that the first material or medium, the one on top is equal to air. And the second material or medium, the one on the bottom, is equal to water. Then you're going to change the wavelength of light, which is what you can do up here. Okay, so if you notice, there is a little light spectrum over here. You can change that wavelength and the laser beam will change colors accordingly. And you want to basically explore the following question. So what happens to the angle of refraction as the wavelength of light increases? And so again, the angle of refraction is right here. It is the angle between the ray of refracted light and the normal, which is this dotted line. How does that angle change as I move and change that wavelength of light and specifically as it increases? And how does this refraction explain how white light can create a rainbow with every color? And so if you want to explore that one more, there's a website over here for more additional background information to help you answer that question. 
And the last thing is just a little challenge bonus for you to explore if you're interested. It is an optional extension and you'll be exploring Snell's Law. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. I'd be more than happy to schedule an office hours with you or answer your questions via email. Great guys, thank you so much and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.